StarCraft is best known for its worldwide multiplayer appeal. Every day, thousands gather on Battle.net to play the multiplayer feature of this game. But what if I told you that there exists a side to StarCraft that many have never given much thought? Overshadowed by the hype surrounding Korean champions and occasionally by white dudes who just aren't as good, the campaign of StarCraft is comparatively underappreciated. So move aside, MC, SOS, and other oddly named professionals, because Artanis is the true champion of this video. Who is he? What makes him literally one of the greatest heroes in the universe? To get a glimpse into the nature of this glorious leader, bind your consciousness to the Kala and prepare your armies, Executor. This is the story you never knew. Before we delve into why Artanis is such a cool dude, it's important to note that he's in desperate need of a protein and lifting regimen. Besides that though, allow me to enlighten you with the basics of the StarCraft universe. Hundreds of years in the future, humanity known as Terran expanded its reach beyond Earth to the Kaprulu sector of the Milky Way. For centuries, these brave colonists went unopposed, save for their hatred of each other that always seems to bubble up between humans. But why while in the midst of war with ourselves, our species encountered a much grander threat, the Zerg. This alien race is a hyper-evolutionary force which can create new branches of its genome so quickly that brand new abominations can be evolved into existence in little time and thrown at enemies in unfathomable numbers. These guys are insect-like in every way. From their slimy tentacliness, to their hive mind social order, to their ability to chug out hundreds of new units in no time, these motherfuckers will make you real sorry you didn't block your ramp with a barrack supply depot combo. But the shitstorm that hit humanity doesn't stop there. Another race called the Protoss also occupy the Caprulu sector. Their technology is crazy advanced, lacking much of the clunkiness the Terrans seem to have. Teleportation and laser death beams from the sky are tried and true technology in their arsenal. So there you have it, we've got three races, the Terran which is humanity in the future, the Zerg, an insect-like horror show that spreads like a disease wherever it can, and the Protoss, a highly advanced, highly organized civilization with technology that rivals or surpasses humanity. In fact, this kind of reminds me of- <gasps> Bungie, get your own ideas! Shh, not you, Chief. It's not your fault. I kid, I kid, there's nothing wrong with getting inspiration, and it is interesting how often video games build off of each other. And with that, we're ready to dive into the life of this sexy man alien. He may not be human, but he's someone whose actions can resonate with any species. Artanis is what you might call a great uniter. The history of the Protoss spans many epochs, their proud people first rising into sentience on the planet Ire, achieving much the same social capabilities as our own species. But rather than using vocal cords and orifices for communication, the Protoss used telepathy. With their strong psychic bonds, the Protoss led a peaceful existence as hunter-gatherers, conglomerating into several tribes. It's worth mentioning there was one tribe called the Taldarim who broke off and evolved completely separately, but we'll get to them later. Back to the mainstream Protoss, it's around this time the Zelnaga entered the picture. Impressed by the psychic abilities of the Protoss, these gods quietly accelerated the evolution of these simple hunter-gatherers, only revealing themselves when the time was right. And so from the sky descended the Zelnaga, now taking a more direct role in aiding the expansion of Protoss consciousness. But as the Protoss advanced by leaps and bounds, so too did their egos. The firstborn tribes began doubting the intentions of their gods, doubting the intentions of other tribes. From this distrust came a severing of psychic bonds, leaving the intertwined consciousness between Zelnaga and fellow Protoss in shambles. These gods who intervened with the best intentions took this manifested distrust as a deep betrayal, abandoning their children and losing many 
many to now further enraged Protoss in the process. The leaving of the Zelnaga sparked powerful, mixed emotions within the Firstborn. A potent brew of love and hate defined their memories of their lost gods and ultimately caused the severing of psychic bonds between Protoss tribes. This disconnect marked the beginning of what would be known as the Aeon of Strife, when the once proud Protoss descended back into Stone Age tendencies and technologies, shedding each other's blood for countless lifetimes. Highlighting the phrase countless lifetimes, the significance of the strife becomes even more apparent, because the average lifetime of an individual Protoss is 1,000 years. And for countless of these really long lifetimes, Protoss waged violent, hate-fueled conflicts on one another. Man, an aeon of strife really hits the nail on the head. That's like three times as long as it'll take Valve to make Half-Life 3. But as this chronic warfare raged on the fields of ire, a glimmer of hope shined dimly in the laboratory of a man known as Koss. He dedicated his life to studying leftover Zelnaga artifacts called Kaderan Crystals, ultimately discovering how they were used so long ago to unite the collective Protoss consciousness. The solution to the strife, as he saw it, was to merge the minds of Protoss once again so that they may feel each other's every thought and emotion. And so Koss traveled across Ire, spreading the word of the Kala, a psychic and emotional bond that linked together the Protoss as brothers and sisters. Once in the Kala, to inflict pain on another was to inflict pain on oneself. To love another was to love oneself. This bond of love and unity grew exponentially, uniting even the most bitter of enemies as their differences merged into a single mind. The Second Age of the Protoss began with Ire now a beacon of prosperity and technological advancement. There remained a group of rebels, however, calling themselves the Nerezim, or the Dark Templar. They valued subtlety and independence over overtness and unity. They rejected the Kala for fear that it would erase the individual for their heresy, the Nerezim were banished from ire, hated and feared with the same vigor that permeated the Aeon of Strife. But this irony was lost on the Kala-loving Protoss. And with that, it would seem I've gotten way off topic. Am I even gonna talk about Artanis in this video? It's been like seven minutes and all I've said about him is that he's sexy and a great uniter. Neither of which are wrong, but I can understand the confusion. Well, fear not, Executor, because this in-depth history lesson of super awesome Protoss lore serves a very important purpose. What purpose is that? It turns out nothing pulls out all the stops towards loving one another like a common universe-threatening enemy. This is where we truly jump into the life of Artanis, and more specifically the most recent StarCraft installment, Legacy of the Void. So if you want to avoid spoilers, better utilize that high APM and click off of this video. Nerd. After centuries of military prowess, Artanis ascends to Hierarch of the Protoss, Commander of the Golden Armada. The initiation is bittersweet, for it comes on the eve of a full-scale invasion to retake the beloved homeworld of Ire, which in recent years has fallen to a planet-consuming wave of Zerg leaving the proud Protoss drifting aimlessly through space and inhabiting strange planets. Exactly how Ire turned into a cesspool of Zerg would take too long to go over, but just know that literally the entire planet is controlled, consumed by millions of Zerg. Artanis doubts his intentions, standing on a nearby moon when his friend Kaldalis joins him. Kaldalis asks why Artanis is alone on the eve of such a monumental occasion. The Hierarch wonders aloud if what he is about to command his people to do is the correct plan of action. Kaldalis assures his brother that there is no greater purpose than retaking their beloved homeworld, but Artanis reflects on the Aeon of Strife, realizing that history and tradition are not not always something one wants to connect with. Perhaps the Protoss can take a new trajectory and not dwell so much on a tradition which boasts eons of civil war and the ultimate banishing of the Dark Templar who were as much Protoss brothers as those who accepted the Kala. The inner voice that suggested this piece of wisdom was temporarily brushed aside following more words from Kaldalis. And so the invasion remains steady in the agenda, until a Dark Templar named Zeratul has 
another event he wants to pencil in right after this sweet space platform party. According to him, an evil Zelnaga named Amon is spreading darkness throughout the universe which threatens all of creation. The Protoss invasion of Ire is continued, however, but after it is revealed Amon has corrupted the Kala with his dark consciousness, poisoning the minds of all firstborn merged with it. Here's where the summary stops and the analysis begins. Remember those Dark Templar and how they valued individuality to the point of rejecting the Kala? This independence has left an entire faction of Protoss warriors untainted by Amon. Thus, Zeratul is able to free Artanis from the corruption at the cost of his own life. How ironic that for so long the Kala-loving Protoss banished the Dark Templar for rejecting the Kala, and now they owe the sanity of their great leader to Zeratul. This cosmically hilarious joke is not lost on Artanis, for it is this knowledge that allows him to fulfill his ultimate destiny of leading a united Protoss against the most existential threat ever. And it doesn't stop there. The Taldarim, those Protoss who branched off and did their own thing for me, millions of years now also wish to fight Amon. Which is ironic because they've worshipped Amon since the beginning of their civilization. But it would seem Amon has betrayed them by threatening to destroy all of creation, which includes the Taldarim. Turns out the God of Darkness is kind of an asshole. Good on you for realizing that, Taldarim. Under the command of Artanis, three previously separate sects of Protoss all wear the same banner. This unity does not come smoothly, however. Old tensions do not die easily, especially with this bitch in the picture. Her name is Rohana, a preserver, able to access every emotion and experience of the greatest Protoss minds going back hundreds of thousands of years. She continues to advise Artanis against trusting the Dark Templar and Taldarim. Likewise, the Taldarim are slow to fully accept Artanis as the leader of this new united Protoss. Rohana experiences the rifts between Dark Templar and Kalai as though they happened yesterday. She constantly cites the raging emotions of respected Protoss ancestors as reason to reject the Dark Templar. But Artanis is a forward thinker. He says history is perhaps best looked at through hindsight and not the thoughts and feelings of those who experienced it. In fact, we owe much of our own progress to this particular view of history. Would America have helped England during World War II if FDR was consulting the feelings of revolutionary war generals? Probably not. And if that had happened, would we still have Doctor Who? Or One Direction? I shudder to think. Plus, that Hitler guy would have had an easier time doing his thing, and fuck that guy! With millions of years of Protoss mindset being drawn from the Kala, most cannot fathom this method of thinking. But Artanis, an already wise individual now separated from the Kala, sees the error of constantly reliving history. Newer generations need not continue the rifts of their ancestors, he believes. And so, throughout Legacy of the Void, he projects an aura of love and strength, uniting the once three enemies and pulling them back together when old hatreds bubble up. There is one last group of Protoss I'd like to mention, the Purifiers. They are machine simulations of the minds of the greatest Protoss warriors. They were created long ago by firstborn scientists meant to aid the Protoss in battle. These simulated personalities were considered to be 99.3% accurate to any respective personality. However, this army of robotic simulations of dead heroes was treated more as a mass of slaves than a group of sentient beings. And and so the purifiers rebelled, wreaking havoc until they were sealed away, only to be reopened in the most hopeless of situations. Like right now, for instance. Rohana claims the purifiers are dangerous, the Taldarim claim they should be commanded like the slaves they were meant to be. But Artanis sees differently. He awakens the purifiers and respects their sentience that his ancestors doubted. He allows these reawoken simulations to choose their destiny, appealing to their free will in hopes that they would not be as hateful as before and willingly join the Protoss ranks against Amon. From here, the alliance grows even further, expanding to include 
include Zerg and Terran forces. Without giving away too much, the ending of Legacy of the Void is quite the happy ending. So there you have it, four previously separated factions are one, thanks to a single person who respected everyone enough to rally them under his banner. Whether it's respecting the individuality of the Dark Templar, the darker nature of the Taldarim, or the free will of simulated minds, Artanis has seen past differences and focused on unity. Had he not, the forces of his people and the Terran and Zerg may very well have fragmented, fighting themselves while Amon's dark army overwhelmed the universe. He was the first Protoss to unify his proud people, sorry Tassadar, by realizing that looking at history through the minds of those who lived it is not nearly as helpful as hindsight. He was the first Protoss to emanate respect for all beings, except Amon, because he's a cosmic asshole. He was the first Protoss to embody the open-mindedness that would progress his people into a new golden age of prosperity once Amon saw his end. Except for the Taldarim. They went off and did their own thing again. But their leader did allow one chance for everyone under him to defect to the mainstream Protoss, which is pretty open-minded for that guy. So thanks, Artanis, you don't even need to lift to be cool. Because you united your people and saved the universe without the Kala, a feat thought impossible for the last few eons or so. And that's the story. You never knew. Whoa, that was a long one, but fascinating nonetheless. If you watched this far, I assume you were entertained, so why not follow us on Twitter, at Tricycle Team. From there, you can access the inner machinations of our minds. Don't have a Twitter? Well, check in for our streams on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 1pm and Wednesdays at 8pm on YouTube Gaming. It's gonna be awesome! Until next time, you sexy people!